Hi there, I'm Martin Ventura. I'm a second year master's student advised by Dr. Susan Paskowitz and the entomology department here at UW-Madison. It's my sincere honor to present this flash talk about my work and this my second year of participation within the Planetary Health Scholars cohort. Well, the central theme of this short talk is on my research in the field of insect agriculture. I think I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the great experience I had serving as the graduate teaching assistant for the inaugural semester of UW's first ever undergraduate planetary health course, aptly titled Our Planet, Our Health. Amidst the intensity of the COVID-19 pandemic all around us and the strangeness of remote learning, assisting with this class really deepened my academic grounding in the planetary health framework and offered me some expanded insights into the relevance of my own research in entomology toward the health of humans and non-human planetary denizens. So uh, in the spring of 2021, the emphasis of my work returned solely to research and after many months of preparation, uh, all, all of our preparation happily came to fruition when we were able to experimentally test the growth and nutritional impacts of cricket feeds derived from maize stover that's been fermented by pleurotus or oyster mushroom. I'd like to offer a little context about edible bugs and why we think they're important to conversations about planetary health. Farmed insects are nutrient-dense food for humans and livestock, and many people, myself included, hope that insects will serve an ever more important role in meeting increasing global food demands while contributing relatively less to agricultural infringement upon planetary boundaries. This optimism seems somewhat well-founded. Many insects, including the subject of our study, the two-spotted field cricket, known as Gryllus bamaculatus, seen here nibbling a leaf I gave them as a treat, produce fewer greenhouse emissions, uh, require less water, less land, and less feed per equivalent weight than most commonly farmed vertebrate livestock like cattle and pigs. So the feed we give to the farmed insects like these crickets is really the core question of my study. The cultivation of corn or maize dominates many agroecosystems worldwide, including in rural Zambia, where our research project subsidizes four small-scale cricket farms. Unfortunately, it turns out that corn grain alone makes kind of unimpressive cricket chow. In rough strokes, it's got too much carbohydrate and not enough other nutrients to sustain healthy cricket populations. My research poses this question. What kinds of inexpensive and abundant stuff does it actually make sense to feed to farmed insects in an agricultural landscape characterized by lots and lots of corn? Here's the possibility I've been investigating. After harvesting an ear of corn for its grain, there's a lot of stalk or stover biomass left behind. While we think a cricket would struggle to make a nutritious meal out of an old corn stalk on account of there being too much hard-to-digest lignin and cellulose, a white rot fungus like oyster mushrooms will readily grow on such a substrate. In culturing corn stover with this fungal middleman, lignin in the stover gets busted up and digested by fungal enzymes, and the fungus concentrates a lot of the good stuff, the proteins and amino acids, into its own tissues, while losing less desirable carbon to respiration. We think this fungally enriched corn stover may have potential as feed adjunct for these insects, enabling them to gain weight more quickly and to possibly offer more nutrition to human end consumers. An added economic and nutritional benefit to this proposed model, of course, is the simultaneous production of edible mushrooms, which are nothing more than the reproductive structures of the fungal mycelium doing all that heavy lifting, breaking down the lignin and over. So a lot of the substrate preparation took place in my backyard, uh, where to the unanimous delight of all my neighbors, we installed a low-tech propane-powered mushroom pasteurizer uh, constructed from a recycled ethanol barrel. Once pasteurized and inoculated with fungus, we transferred these uh, maize-over substrates to the lab, where substrates were cultured to induce variable fruiting effort between various treatments. We then dried it, ground it into cricket feed, and measured uh, as response variables the cricket size, their weight, and their body condition over time. At the end of March, we completed our feed trial and are now working to analyze growth performance data. Our collaborators at Colorado State University are analyzing cricket biomass for zinc and iron and other critically important micronutrients. In closing, I'd like to thank the following people without whom this work would have been impossible, pandemic or no. 
These are Susan Paskowitz, Valerie Stull, Michael Bartlett Smith, Tim Lorenz, and Genevieve Beckrow. You each have my profound gratitude for the guidance, support, and hard work you've contributed to these efforts. Thank you.